Well, we are now beyond the genealogy section in First Chronicles, and we get into the narratives. Every once in a while, we're going to get lists of names, lists of other things, but uh, we have more of the story line here now that actually picks up with uh, with Saul. And we don't get the long story of Saul, though. And in fact, in the storylines in general in First Chronicles are are going to be shorter than they are. Um, in, say, First and Second Samuel. So we don't get the whole story of Saul here. We, we go right to the critical moment where actually the death of Saul is announced. And it says the Philistines fought against Israel and the men of Israel fled uh, before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. So this, this is not a glorious moment at all. In fact, uh, we, we learn that Saul and his sons um, were struck down by the Philistines, struck down. And their names are listed, but then it talks about how the archers found Saul. They, uh, he was wounded, and uh, he was close to death. He, he fell on his own sword. He says Saul took his own sword and fell on it. And it, it just says, thus Saul died. And when all the men of Israel who were in the valley saw that the army had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they abandoned their cities and fled, and the Philistines came and lived in them. Now, this is bad enough, but it's not the end of the story because what happens is the next day the Philistines come upon uh, the dead body of uh, Saul and, his, and the bodies of his sons. And they strip Saul, they, it says here, they strip him, they took his head and his armor and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to carry out um, to, to the people the, what they call this good news uh, to, their, to their idols and to the people. Ugh. And they, they hang up his armor uh, and his head in the temple of their false god Dagon. And uh, it's, it's just horrific, really, what they've done in showing their, oh, their, their authority over um, the king of Israel, the man who was the king. And, and it, it says that one city wanted to do something about this. This was the city of Jabesh Gilead. And what they did is the valiant men arose and took away the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons and brought them to Jabesh and they buried their bones at a particular place in Jabesh Gilead. They fasted seven days. So this is a little bit of a of good news that that there's some group within Israel, some people within Israel that wanted to show respect to, to Saul's remains. And um, then we get the commentary upon all of this. What, what was actually happening? What was, what was the Lord doing in the midst of all of this? And it says this, that Saul died for his breach of faith. He broke faith with the Lord and that he did not keep the command of the Lord. Details are not given here, but they, they've already been given in a previous book. But the disobedience is recorded, and it said, and also Saul consulted a medium seeking guidance. So when he was at that key moment in his life when he he needed to, to hear some direction, or so he thought, he consults a medium instead of actually turning to the Lord. Why? Because the Lord had turned away from him. So he, it says he did not seek guidance from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. It's very blunt, very real. This is what happens. Now, I just want you to take this forward centuries into the future to the story of Jesus Christ. So here we have... Um, Saul dying for his breach of faith. With Jesus, we have only obedience. There's, there's no disobedience at all. We have a death for both men. Saul dies, but 
uh, his death is not glorious. And there's something that's so glorious about the death of Jesus that we say we glory in the cross. And with the case of uh, of Saul, you you have the men of Jabesh Gilead wanting to give him a good burial. With the case of Jesus, you have a resurrection from the dead and his ascension to glory and he rules and reigns. This is the one, this is the king and, and no one, no one can take away the glory of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this good story, this good news of Jesus Christ and we place all our hope and trust in him and not in the rulers of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, friends.